بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد uh, Welcome back everybody today for our second class with, uh, with our Sheikh, Sheikh Samir Hafizahullah uh, Today, yesterday's class was an introduction to this conference, to this Dawrah the virtues of seeking knowledge and today it will be the explanation of the famous hadith من سلك طريقا يلتمس به علما whoever takes the path of seeking knowledge and the hadith inshallah will be read by the shaykh and he will, be, he will explain the hadith today so most of the topic of today is on the particular hadith specifically furthermore there is a pdf loaded on the chat group for today's lesson on the hadith there is a pdf loaded on the chat room on the chat room also uh, there's a link that is also posted a uh, telegram link for the uh, Sabil al-Rashad group that's already posted also in the chat uh, room where brothers and sisters can join the group and they can see the PDF also loaded over there and anything that is pertaining to this class or anything that's pertaining to Sabil al-Rashad inshallah bi rahman furthermore any questions that is uh, the, the brothers and sisters need or have for the Sheikh, they can post it on the chat room, inshallah. The questions will be filtered through pertaining to the topic and will be presented to Akhuna Sheikh Samir at the end of the class and inshallah he will answer accordingly, bismillah. And with this, we would like to start the class. Sheikh Samir Mashkuran Majura. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد So we begin this evening seeking the aid and the help and support of Allah سبحانه وتعالى alone we began reading from this famous hadith, the, ha the hadith of Abi Darda, radiyallahu anhu, with regards to the clarification of the virtue of knowledge and the virtue of the people of knowledge and the great reward in this life and in the hereafter for those who strive to learn what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to apply that. And is the hadith of Abi Darda, radiyallahu anhu and this particular narration it has been collected in more than one book of hadith and this narration has been collected by by Abi Dawood and likewise by Ali Imam Al-Tirmidhi and also, also by Ibn Majah and this hadith has been collected by Darimi and also Ibn Hibban and Tabarani and likewise by Bayhaqi this hadith has been narrated by Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi and also by Ibn Abdul Barr Rahmatullahi ala al -jami'. This hadith is well known to the people of knowledge and it has been narrated from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with numerous chains of narration and we see that Shaykh al-Albani Rahimahullahu Ta'ala he has declared this hadith to be authentic and it is a hadith that is sahih and it is a hadith that is authentic on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we see that we have the wording of, of Abu Dawood. And Abu Dawood, he mentioned this narration, Rahimahullah Ta'ala fi sunanihi, in the chapter or in the book of knowledge, fi kitabi al-ilm, fi kitabi al-ilm, in the book of, of knowledge, under the book or under the chapter, Babu Fadli al-ilm. In the chapter, the virtue of knowledge. The virtue of knowledge. So Abu Dawood, he mentioned with his chain, Rahimahullah Ta'ala to Kathir ibn Qais. Qala kuntu jalisan ma'a Abi Darda, radiyallahu anhu fi masjid Dimashq. Faja'ahu rajulun, faqala ya Abu Darda, inni jidtuka min madinat al-Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam li hadithan balagani, anna katu hadithuhu an Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ma jittu li haja. We see that Kathir ibn Qais, 
he is from the Tabi'een and he is from the people of Asham. And he was sitting with Abu Darda radiallahu anhu in the masjid of Dimask. And he said that a man, he came to him and he said, Oh Abu Darda, I have come to you from the city of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for a narration that I have heard that you relate from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I have come, I have come for no other purpose. I have come for no other purpose. So this is the beginning of the narration. And we see it begins in this manner. For the student, the Muslim who ponders over this affair, he will find great benefits. But, but, but before we discuss the benefits from this narration, and we'll discuss it in the Ta'ala, portion by portion, and bit by bit. Before that, we look at this narrator, Abu Darda, radiallahu anhu, and that he is from the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those who saw him and believed in him and followed him and learned from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His name is, uh, or his kunya is Abu Darda. His name is Uwaymir ibn Zayd ibn Qais al-Ansari, radiallahu anhu. And he is well known by his kunya. And he is well known by his kunya, Abu al-Darda. And he is a noble companion. And the first of the battles that he witnessed with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the battle, of, uh, the battle of Uhud. And he was known for his devout worship. And he was known for his knowledge. And he lived until the Khilafah of Uthman radiallahu anhu. And he died in this time radiallahu anhu wa the sahabati ajma'een. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, he is known as Hakimu hadihi al-Ummah. Hakimu. And this is what has been mentioned about him by Zahabi. Rahimahullahu ta'ala. Hakimu hadihi al-umma wa sayyidu al-qurra bi Dimashq. That he is the wise man, considered the wise man al-hakim from this ummah. Meaning he was known for his wisdom. And he was known for his knowledge and understanding in the deen. And he was known for his piety and his righteousness. Radiyallahu anhu. And likewise, he was from the best of those who recited the Quran. And what has been mentioned about him radiyallahu anhu, that he is from those who recited the Qur'an to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is from those who memorized the entire Qur'an and the life of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is from the best of those reciters. And he is from those who, the people, they learned the Qur'an from him after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was in Dimashq. And he taught the Qur'an there, and the people, they learned from him, radiallahu anhu. From his beautiful statements, the statements of Abi Darda, radiallahu anhu, that he would say to the people, مَا لِي أَرَى أُلَمَاءَكُمْ يَدْهَبُونَ وَجُهَادَكُمْ لَا يَتَعَلَّمُونَ تَعَلَّمُوا فَإِنَّ الْعَالِمَ وَالْمُتَعَلِّمَ شَرِيْكَانِي فِي الْأَجْرِ He would say, radiallahu anhu, and from his noble quotes and pieces of advice that he would mention radiallahu anhu Abu Darda he said why do I see your scholars going away meaning dying how, how come I see the people of knowledge dying going away and the ignorant amongst you are not learning and the ignorant amongst you are not learning he said you have to learn you have to learn because verily the scholar and the student they are partners and they share in the reward and they share in the reward Abu Darda, he understood the virtue of knowledge. And he was from those people of knowledge. The people of knowledge from the upright, from the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was mentioned about him, أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْأُولَمَا الْفُقَهَا الَّذِينَ يَشْهُونَ مِنَ الدَّاءِ That he was from those people of knowledge that had knowledge and he had understanding in, in jurisprudence. And he was from those people who would cure he would cure the individuals from diseases, meaning he would cure their hearts from the, from the diseases of shubuhat, shahawat, and he would cure them with knowledge, and with a reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. And he would cure them with the knowledge of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and like this are the people of knowledge. They cure the souls and the hearts with a beneficial light and knowledge from the Quran and from the sunnah. Abu Darda, from his beautiful statements, is that he would mention radiallahu anhu, لَن تَكُونَ عَالِيمًا حَتَّى تَكُونَ مُتَعَالِيمًا That you will never be a scholar 
until first you'll be a student. And you will never be a student until you apply the knowledge that you know. And you will never be a student until you apply the knowledge that you know. He said, رضي الله عنه إن أخف ما أخاف إذا وقفت للحساب أن يقال لي ما عملت فيما علمت He said, that which I fear the most that which I fear the most if I stand for my reckoning is that it will be said to me what did you do with what you knew? Yani, what did you do with the knowledge that you had? And this is the reality and the understanding of that statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إنما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء that those who truly, truly fear Allah Azza wa Jal from his slaves, they are the people of knowledge. Because whenever they increase in knowledge, they understand the greatness and the majesty of Allah and His power, His authority, and they fear Him. And also whenever they increase in knowledge, they realize their weakness and their need before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and their deficiency. And whenever they increase in knowledge, they realize that they will be held accountable for that. So this causes them to be even more uh, frightful and fearful and to strive harder to apply that knowledge so they will not be held accountable for that which they know. The people of knowledge, they're afraid. They're afraid with regards to their knowledge. They're afraid that they will be held accountable and that they will learn something and not use it and not benefit from it, therefore being a proof against them. This is the way of the people of knowledge. Abu Darda, رضي الله عنه, he says, وَيْلُ لِلَّذِي لَا يَعْلَمُ مَرْ He was said, وَيْلُ وَيْلْ يَعْنِي الْحَلَاكُ الْعَذَابِ And he's making a supplication and dua. This is a warning for that person. May he be destroyed, the one who does not know. He would say that one time. وَوَيْلُ لِلَّذِي يَعْلَمُ وَلَا يَعْمَلُ سَبْعَ مَرَاتِ But as for the one who, who knows, but he does not apply his knowledge, he would say it seven times. وَيْلُ لَهُ وَيْلُ لَهُ And he, meaning that this is something that is serious. It's one thing to not know, but it's even worse and more severe when an individual, he has knowledge, and he does not apply it. Whenever an individual has knowledge and he does, he does not apply it. So these are some of the beneficial statements that have come from Hakim Hadihi al-Ummah Abi Darda radiyallahu anhu. So we begin the narration again. It came from Kathir ibn Qais. And he is sitting with Abu Darda radiyallahu anhu in the masjid. And it is known that Abu Darda, he used to sit in the masjid. He would be there and he would teach the people there. And he had many students and he had gatherings and he would teach the people and they would come to him to learn the Quran and he would teach them the book of Allah, teaching, teaching them how to recite it and how to memorize it, and teaching them how to follow it and to apply it. Radiallahu anhu wa sahabati ajma'in. So this narration, it begins in this beautiful man. Kuntu jalisan ma'a bi darda fi masjid Dimashq. Kathir ibn Qais, he says, I was sitting with Abu Darda in the masjid of Damascus. Faja'ahu rajulun. فقال يا أبو دردا أنا من هي كيم صدني هي سأو أبو دردا إني جدتك من مدينة الرسول verily I have come to you from the city of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم why did he come he says لي حديث بلغني أنك تحدثه عن رسول الله ما جدك لحاجة he said I have come from the city of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم for a narration that has reached me that you narrated on the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said I did not come for any other need and I did not come for any other purpose I only came to hear this narration from you I do not want no money from you or no praise from you all I want to do is learn from you and benefit from you the knowledge that, the knowledge that you carry from the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم I want to hear this hadith it has come in one wording by Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala the Abu Darda he asked him ma qdamaka ya akhi he said what, what brings you oh my brother what brings you oh my brother the hadith balagani annaka tu hadithu tu hadithu an rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said what brings me is a narration a narration that has reached me that you narrated on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Abu Darda in this wording in Jami' Tirmidhi he says amma jitta li haja so you didn't come for some other reason? He said, no. He said, you didn't come. Are you sure you didn't come for some business, some trade and some commerce? You, you came here to get some money and the likes like this along with this intention to learn? He said, no, no, no. He said, I did not come except in, in search for this narration. Except in search for this narration. We see the distance between Damascus and Medina. 
And we know in those days, they did not have airplanes, nor did they have buses or cars or motorcycles in their lives, but rather they, they would walk on feet or they would ride on riding animals. But because of the great desire that the Salaf they had to learn, and this is based upon their certain knowledge of the virtue of this knowledge, that this is revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obtaining it, and obtaining it as the means of success in this life and the hereafter, and that this is the knowledge that will lead to the mercy of Allah and His pleasure, they will go to great hardships to learn. They will go to great hardships to learn, and like this in traveling, traveling this distance, not for money, not for wealth, nothing from the dunya, but rather for a hadith. Not even for a hadith, not, even, not, not for narrations, but rather for one narration, he came to hear this narration. Likewise, in one of the wordings by Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, and he has a book likewise called Al-Rihla fi Talib al-Hadith, he mentioned this narration. He mentioned this narration in one of his wordings, he said that Abu Darda at this time, Allahu anhu, he told this man, Abshir in kunta sadiqan, Abshir in kunta sadiqan, have glad tidings if you are truthful. And he told him he's coming. He's coming for this purpose, no other reason. Just to learn this hadith, Abu Darda is reminding him about the, the issue of ikhlas and the issue of a siddiq ma'Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi talib al-ilm that a person, he must be sincere and that he must seek the knowledge for the sake of Allah so that he can, work, he can learn what is pleasing to Allah from statement and action, from creed and from conduct, learning for this reason only, seeking knowledge for this reason only so he can apply that. So we can use that knowledge as a light for him to draw him near to the, to the mercy of Allah and his pleasure. If this is the case and he's truthful with Allah in that, then have glad tidings and he have goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Darda, he says, have glad tidings if, if you are truthful. If you are truthful, meaning truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your search for knowledge. In your search for knowledge. So we see in this portion of the narration, even before the hadith, even before the statements of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this great benefit, showing us the great desire and care and concern that the salaf they had for their deen. That the deen, it was the, uh, it was the main concern and the delight of their eye. And they would not trade nothing for that, nor would they put it in any hardship or danger. They would never jeopardize their religion, rather they would jeopardize their life first before their deen. And they would protect it. And they will go through great hardships and they would be very diligent to, to learn it. And this is an example of that, traveling this distance and traveling to seek knowledge, my noble brothers and sisters, this is a asl, this is a foundation and a fundamental principle with regards to learning. That the people of Hadith, even uh, before the people of Hadith, before the Tabi'een, even in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would travel to seek knowledge. Even the Prophets before, they would travel to seek knowledge. And this has been established in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fundamental issue with regards to this in principle is the story in Surah Al-Kahf that we all know. The story of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam with uh, Al-Khadr and that he traveled. Whenever he found out that there was a man who had knowledge that he did not have. It is known that Musa, he is from Ulul Azmi min al-Rusul. He's from the best of the Rusul and he was the best of mankind at that time. Alayhi salatu wa salam Whenever he found out that there was another individual who has knowledge that he did not have, he did not wait. Whether he, whether he traveled and he set out on a travel. And he mentioned, He said, I will not travel until I reach the, the junction of the two seas or until I travel and travel for a long period. For a long period. To seek knowledge. To seek knowledge. No doubt at that time, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he's the most virtuous of the people. But this did not detour him from learning, whether he humbled himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he went on this journey to someone who is less than him in virtue, and less than him in reality and knowledge, but he has something that he did not have from this virtue of knowledge, and therefore he, hum he humbled himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he traveled. He traveled whenever he met him. What did he say? He said, can I follow you? Can I follow you so that I can learn from you? that which you have been taught from the upright guidance, we see that this is the way of the people of knowledge. That whenever we find somebody who has knowledge and he is upright, and what is apparent is that he is good in his conduct and manners. Before that, his creed is sound and solid, and his methodology likewise is good, we follow them. We follow them because of the light that they have and the good that they have with them, and we benefit from them. And this is the way of the prophets before. Alayhim salatu wassalam. And this continued in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that there will be delegations. 
There would be delegations from the Qabail, Qabail Arabiya, the Arabic tribe. They would come. They would come from far and wide, delegations. The leaders would send individuals to go in groups, traveling distances in the desert to meet the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to learn from him and to learn from him. And this is something that is known, traveling to seek knowledge, going out and setting on a journey, on a path to learn, to learn a tawheed, to learn the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to learn his right, that he is the only one worthy of worship subhanahu wa ta'ala, to learn the sunan, the sunan of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, setting out on that path, leaving their home, leaving their family, selling their property, saying goodbye, astawdi'akum Allah, all to go learn, to learn the adhkar of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the morning and the evening, to learn the, the wudu of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before all of that, to learn his creed. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu wa barakatuhu alayhi. This is a methodology, this is a way of goodness. And the people they have to take this seriously. And those who are able to go, they will go. And those who are not able to go, they will aid those who are able to go. Not everybody is able to go, but those who are able, they should go. They should go seek and they should learn. They should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they should strive to go learn to come back to be a light and a benefit for their communities. And those individuals who are not able to go, they should aid them and support them and help them financially and, and any means that they have, any means that, that they can in this, in this way. And this is from the greatest aspect of cooperating upon piety and righteousness, that they will cooperate together to learn, to bring back people who will be imams for their community and qudwa, qudwa hasana, that they will be good role models in this manner. But a person he has to learn, a person he has to set out in this manner. The companions, even after the Prophet wasallam, they continue to seek. They continue to seek knowledge. And it's been narrated that one of the companions, he would travel days, a distance, far distances, just to hear a narration that he already knows, just to make sure that he had memorized it properly from the Prophet, from the Prophet wasallam. And like this, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, he traveled from Medina all the way to Misr, to Egypt, to meet Uqba ibn Amr, to hear a hadith. He says that nobody, nobody left it on the earth has heard this hadith directly from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, me and you. He traveled all the way to Egypt to verify the hadith. Ha from Uqba ibn Amr, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, radiyallahu anhu. The hadith about sitr al-Muslim. The hadith about the obligation of covering the faults of a Muslim. This, this noble companion, Allahu Akbar. For this narration, he already heard it and he knows it. He heard it directly and learned it from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he wants to verify. There's one man left. He knows who heard it likewise from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he's in Egypt. He traveled there. It's mentioned on this journey that whenever he got there, he heard the narration from Uqba ibn Amr, Allahu Anhu, and did not even take his belongings off his riding animal. Whenever he heard the narration, he turned around and went back. Similar like this, like this man in this narration, they came for one purpose, this is knowledge. To learn, to learn the way of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they believe and they have Iman and they have faith and they want to go to Jannah. And they know that there's a path, and that is the path of, of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so they will be diligent to learn that way. They will be diligent to learn that way. And the Tabi'een after them likewise, my noble brothers and sisters, they, they, they continued the Sunnah. The sunnah of seeking knowledge and the sunnah of traveling to seek knowledge. And it's been narrated from Sa'id ibn Musayyib, Sayyid al Tabi'een, Rahimahullah ta'ala, he died in the year 95. Uh, after the hijrah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said about himself, In kuntu la asir fi talib al hadith al wahid, masirat al liyali wa iyan. He said, Verily, I used to travel and search for one narration, the distance of nights and days. The distance of nights and days. It's easy for them. It's easy for somebody who has a great concern about their deen to travel these distances, to go through these hardships. And this is from the benefit of reading the likes of these narrations and reading the likes of these chapters of knowledge, Babu Fadli and Ilm, the chapter with regards to the virtue of knowledge. Because whenever a believer, he hears and he understands and he remembers the virtue of this affair, it will be easy for him to bear the, bur the, the burden and the hardship that it takes to achieve it and to obtain it. And obtaining knowledge uh, is nothing light. Rather, this is something that is heavy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned to his prophet, inna sanurti alayka qawlan taqeela. That verily, we are going to reveal to you a heavy statement, a heavy speech. That which has been revealed to the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not light. This is something heavy. But there are means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if a believer, he takes it, it will become light for him. And this was the case with them. And the beginning of that is that they were sincere and they had iman.
they had faith and they believed in La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. They believe that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. And they believe that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And like this, they would travel nights and days in order to hear one narration from, from the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So like this, likewise, a believer will be diligent in these days and we learn from this and we benefit from this. And even today, it's easy to travel, alhamdulillah, traveling in airplanes, we can go distances far, easy and in cars, and the likes like this has been, it's been facilitated for us. And even for those who are not able to travel for whatever the reason may be, financially or physically, the means have been facilitated likewise from the grace and the favor of Allah with these devices and with these means uh, of communication. And the statements of the ulama can come to us live in our homes while we're sitting in the comfort of our own homes live. The statements of the great scholars of Medina and Mecca and Riyadh and other than that. And this is a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should strive to benefit from. And even from those who are not able to benefit directly from the scholars because they have not learned the Arabic language, they can benefit from the, from the students likewise. And they can even use these devices to learn the Arabic language before they would have to travel distances to go learn the Arabic language. Now they can learn them on these devices and they can have live classes. And believer, he will take advantage of this and he will seek knowledge. Whether he would go out on his own or whether he will sit in his home. In any case, seeking knowledge is the means of success. And seeking knowledge, seeking knowledge is the way of happiness in this life and, and in the hereafter. So at this time, Abu Darda, radiallahu anhu, he responded and he said, فَإِنِّي سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ So this man, he came to him and he mentioned this, uh, this issue. He came for this purpose and for this reason. He traveled this distance likewise, only for the narration. Abu Darda, at this time, he mentioned the narration that we see. And that we know the people of knowledge they mentioned that it's possible that this was the narration exactly that the man came for that possibly this narration is the narration that the man came for and, and this is why he narrated the narration but uh, most likely and allah knows best is that and he, this narration was narrated from the aspect and the people of knowledge they say uh they say a shaykh will be shaykh youth come like one thing leads to another the mention of one thing leads a person to remember to mention something else so therefore, whenever Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, he saw this man in this manner coming this distance, traveling to seek knowledge. At this time, he remembered this narration, this narration from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he mentioned it like this, and to encourage that man, you came all this distance to seek knowledge? Ah, oh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said that about those who do what you are involved in, that he will have this reward, that he will have, have this reward. In any case, this is the narration that we study. And uh, that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make beneficial for us and uh, to make uh, a life for us to see, to understand uh, from the statements of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abu Darda, he says that he heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Man salaka tariqan yatrubu fihi ilman, salaka Allahu bihi tariqan min turuqi al jannah, tariqan min turuqi al jannah. That the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that whoever sets out on a path, seeking knowledge in that path, then Allah will set him on a path from the paths of paradise. Then Allah will set him on a path from the paths of paradise. So we see that this is a great glad tidings. And this is a great encouragement to seek knowledge. That the path of paradise will be made easy for the individual who learns and who sets out on the path to learn this knowledge, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the knowledge of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the knowledge of the deen, deen al-Islami bil adillah and to learn the knowledge of the religion of al-Islam and to learn the proofs and evidences with regards to that. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man sadaqa tariqan yatrubu fihi ilma That whoever sets out on a path, tariqan, it's nakira. And he says nakira, meaning it's, it's indefinite. يَطْلُبُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا Also likewise نَكِرًا This is indefinite And this is to be uh, general Meaning that any path who set, Whoever sets out on any path Whether it's a long path Traveling on his feet Or a long path Whether he's journeying uh, Going on a journey long distances Whether he's going down the street to his local masjid Or whether he's simply sitting in his home Opening up the device All of this is included مَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا مَنْ سَلَكَ any path 
whether it's long, whether it's difficult, whether it's easy, whether it's short, and as long as he is sincere and seeking the face and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in seeking knowledge. يَطْرُبُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا يَطْرُبُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا Then he will have this reward. And he likewise, the people of knowledge, they mentioned ilman, any, any knowledge, so long as legislative knowledge, knowledge of aqidah, knowledge of tawheed, whether it's knowledge of tafsir or knowledge of hadith or knowledge of fiqh, whether he's studying the ahkam al sharia or whether he's studying the, the creed or whether he's studying tafsir, all of these are, are included. Whether he's learning about wudu or about salat and the lies like this, or whether he's studying about al jannah or nar, all of this is included. Man salaka, man salaka tariqan yathrubu fihi ilman. Any knowledge, knowledge from the knowledge of the, of the, of the revelation and of the legislation. Even if he's setting out, we should not be little knowledge. Never. Somebody may be setting out today, in these days to learn. He's learning Arif Bata, Arif Bata Tha, Jim Ha Kha. This is a path of knowledge. And this is the path to paradise. And this is a good path. And this is a foundation. This is a foundation. We have to learn the Arabic alphabet. We have to learn the Makhadis, Makhadij al Haruf. Sifat al huruf We have to learn how to recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. All of this is considered here. It doesn't necessarily mean learning knowledge, knowledge of the ulama and the likes like this. No, no doubt that is included. But in reality, it's any knowledge. Anyone who is sincere with Allah and he sets out on a path, on a straight path, to learn the knowledge of the deen, the knowledge of al Islam, the knowledge of the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the knowledge of the way of Sahab al Kiram, radiallahu anhum, he will have. He will have this reward. He will have this reward. And likewise, setting out on a path doesn't even necessarily have to be a path physically where he's walking on his feet. But rather likewise, to go over the knowledge and to review it, to memorize it and to look after it over and over, to open up the books and to research. All of this is likewise to take notes in a notebook. All of this is considered taking a path. All of this is considered a person that's doing this, he's on the path seeking knowledge. Whether he's looking in the, even sometimes some people will look in the phone if they know how to use the proper means to use the phone properly and the, and the internet and the likes like this. This is all a path, a path to seek knowledge. So long as he is uh, careful and cautious with the sources that he, that he reviews. And likewise, a student who reads the books as well, he will be cautious with the sources that, that he reviews. But the point is that this path, that is the path to paradise. It includes all of this, whether he's walking on his feet, whether he's riding on a plane, whether he's going to sit in front of the, the scholars at their feet, whether he's reviewing the knowledge in his home, or sitting in his masjid, all of this, alhamdulillah. When he's, even somebody who's driving down the road, he can be reviewing the Qur'an. All of these people, they're on the path of knowledge. All of these people, walillah, alhamd, they're on the path of knowledge. A believer, he would take advantage of this, and he would learn his deen, and he would hope that this would be a means for the, the path of paradise to be facilitated for him. Man salaka tariqan yatrubu fihi ilma. Ilma. The statement here is seeking knowledge. Seeking knowledge. The people of knowledge, they clarify that whenever this word al-ilm is used, whenever it is used like this in an absolute sense, what is referred to as al-ilm al-shari. The legislated knowledge. So this here is not talking about the knowledge of the dunya. The knowledge of, of, of uh, of the affairs of this life, the knowledge of computers, the knowledge uh, uh, of mechanics, or in the life like this, but rather the knowledge related to the deen. And the people of knowledge, they clarify, al-ilm, qala Allahu, qala rasuluhu, qala sahabatuhum, uru al-irfani. The knowledge, what is referred to here, the knowledge that, that which Allah has mentioned in his book, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and likewise that which the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has mentioned in his authentic sunnah, and likewise that which the companions, they have mentioned, all the Allahu anhum, because verily they are the people of sound understanding. Because verily, the companions, they are the people of sound understanding. So therefore, this is the knowledge that is referred to. Setting out on a path to seek this knowledge. Knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen. Knowledge of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sunnah. It has been mentioned <clears throat> a beautiful benefit by Ibn Hajar rahimahullahu ta'ala and he clarified al-muradu bil-ilm. He clarified al-murad bil-ilm. What is the intent from knowledge? He says al-muradu bil-ilm al-ilm al-shari. The intent with knowledge whenever it is used in the evidences in the text of the Quran and the sunnah and in the, in, on the tongue of the ulama the legislative knowledge. The legislative knowledge. الذي يفيد معرفة ما يجب على المكلف من أمر دينه في عباداته ومعاملاته. 
the legislative knowledge that which will benefit a person and he will be able to understand and know that which is obligatory for him to know with regards to the affairs of his deen and with regards to the affairs of his actions of worship and with regards to the affairs of his contracts and dealings with the people and likewise the knowledge, the knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes and the knowledge of how to establish his right property subhanahu wa ta'ala wa tanzihihi an al naqais the knowledge of how to be able to be upon clarity and creed and to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has absolutely no deficiencies whatsoever and that he has no weaknesses whatsoever and that he is strong and he is alive and he never dies and he needs no one subhanahu wa ta'ala who al ghani and qawi subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing this this is the knowledge this is the knowledge that is referred to here ibn hajar he mentioned rahimahullah wa madaru dhalika ala tafsiri wal hadith wal fiqh and all of this knowledge all of this knowledge it revolves around al tafsir and al hadith and al fiqh and al fiqh and the people of knowledge they mention al fiqh this is the thamara understanding the understanding this is the fruit of studying tafsir and this is the fruit of studying hadith to have the proper understanding and has proceeded in, 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 the, in yesterday's class that wonderful and beautiful and beneficial statement of ibn qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala and the salaf lam yakunu yutliquna ism al-fiqhi illa ala al-ilm alladhi sahibahu al-amal that the salaf they did not used to use the word fiqh except to refer to the knowledge that is accompanied by action that is accompanied by action. So therefore, this is the knowledge that we study. And this is the knowledge that is intended. And what is hoped from that is to have understanding. The understanding that is coupled with action. The understanding that is coupled with, with action. So we see that this narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man salaka tariqan yatrubu fihi ilman. That whoever sets out on a path, seeking knowledge therein. This is a conditional sentence. Where's the response? The response, what is the, the reward for the one who sets out on that path? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Salak Allah bihi tariqan min turuq al-jannah. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he will set him on a path from the paths of Jannah. And this is as the people of knowledge, they mention al-jazau min jins al-amal. That the reward is from the same type of deed. That individuals, they would be recorded, uh, they would be rewarded and recompensed according to their actions. And in a similar manner, from the same type of action they perform, they will have the reward. And whenever this person, he seeks, he, he's, he's sincere with Allah Azza wa Jalla, he sets out on that path to seek knowledge, knowledge of these affairs, knowledge of, uh, of a tawheed, and knowledge of the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the avenues of khair that lead to his mercy and his pleasure, then as a recompense and a reward, justified, likewise, the path to paradise will be made, will be made easy for him. The path of paradise will be made easy for him. And this particular portion of the narration, it has also been narrated by Imam Muslim, but from the Hadith of Abi Hurairah, radiallahu anhu, and the wording is a little bit different. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilman. The similar meaning, that whoever sets out on a path, on a path seeking knowledge, seeking knowledge, sahalallahu lahu bihi tariqan ila jannah. That Allah will make easy for him the path to paradise. And the wording here in uh, Sunan Abi Dawood that we're reading from, that we're reading from, uh, uh, bihi tariqan min al-jannah. What has come from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu and Sahih Muslim, instead of this wording here, sahalallahu lahu bihi tariqan ila al-jannah. That Allah Azza wa Jal will facilitate for him and make easy for him a path to paradise. He will make easy for him a path to paradise. So there are many benefits from uh, this portion of the narration. And uh, from them is that <clears throat> the one who sets out to seek knowledge, the knowledge will be facilitated for him. And it will, be, it, will be, it will be made easy for him. And although this knowledge is heavy, but the one who is sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the one who is truthful with Allah azza wa jalla, and he seeks it in order to understand and to know what Allah has made incumbent upon him and obligatory upon him so that he can apply that. And he seeks this knowledge so that he can know that which is not pleasing to Allah and that which Allah has made impermissible so he can avoid that. He has this intention then even though that this heavy, this knowledge is heavy and uh, seeking this knowledge can become very difficult and there may be many hardships in the path of learning. Some of them hardships on the mind, some of them on the body and likewise some of them on the wealth. 
but the one who is sincere with Allah Azza wa Jal, sahana Allah wa lahu bihi dhalika. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will make that easy for him. And he will make the knowledge light for him. And he will grant him the sweetness of Iman in his heart. And instead of finding a hardship, rather that hardship will, will turn into a delight for him. And he will have a paradise from, in his heart. And a jannah in his heart from this knowledge before he even reaches the jannah and thereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al kareem He mentioned in his book, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلْذِكْرِ فَهَلْ مُدَّكِرُ That verily we have made the Qur'an easy to remember. So then is there any, therefore, is there anyone who will remember? فَهَلْ مُدَّكِرُ يعني مُدَّعِذ مُتَذَكِّر Is there anybody who will ponder and take admonition? Is there anybody who will ponder and take admonition? Very, the, the Qur'an has been made easy. It's been made easy to remember. It's been made easy to memorize and to learn. It's facilitated. So therefore, is, are there anybody, is there anybody who would take admonition? Is there anybody who would benefit this and comply? This is the case. And likewise, some of the Salaf, they used to say about this narration, or excuse me, about this ayat, this noble verse from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, the meaning of this, Hal min ilmin fayu'anu alayh. Is there anyone who is going to seek the knowledge so that he can be aided and he can be helped? Meaning that the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to the one who is sincere. Although the knowledge is heavy and the distance in learning may be hard, especially in the beginning, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will facilitate for that individual, he will make it easy. And this is from the benefits of this narration. Sahal Allahu lahu tariqan il jannah, and in the path to paradise, which is knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will make it easy for him. He will make it easy for him and he will facilitate that. Uh, he will facilitate that for him. And likewise, <clears throat> That which will be facilitated for him likewise is the application of that knowledge. The one who sets out on a path to seek knowledge, be sincere with Allah Azza wa Jal in the manner that has proceeded, then from the benefit of this narration we see the mercy and the grace of Allah for that person and his virtue upon him. The one who has that intention in order to benefit himself and then to benefit others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yasluku bihi tariqan min turuq al-jannah and yuthabituhu al haqti wal huda Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will make him firm and He will guide him to do actions that are pleasing. And that knowledge will be a means for him to perform the deeds that are good until he enters the paradise. All of this is from the, the, the ease of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the facilitation. Min tayseeri lahi azza wa jal li talib ilm. Li talib ilm. For the one who seeks knowledge, Allah will guide his heart. And Allah will guide him to do the deeds that are successful and to, the, to do the deeds that are pleasing. And Allah will guide him to do the actions and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept that from him. Will accept that from him. All from his mercy. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, the path becoming easy, meaning the knowledge will be facilitated for him. And likewise, the application of that knowledge will be facilitated for him. But it's very important to remember that statement of Abu Darda. رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَبْشِرْ يَا أَخِي إِن كُنْتَ صَادِقًا Have glad tidings, brother. If you're truthful. If you're truthful. So therefore be truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will find khair and goodness. You will find khair and goodness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one who seeks knowledge in this manner, the knowledge will be facilitated and he will learn and he will be directed and guided to have the knowledge that he did not have before. And he will be directed and guided and it will be facilitated for him to learn the knowledge that he did not even have before. And this is what has been mentioned from the Salaf that they used to say, Rahimahumullah, man amila bima alim aw rathahullahu ilma malim ya'lam. That whoever applies the knowledge that he has, then Allah will bestow upon him the knowledge of that which he did not know. Meaning that uh, one good deed brings about another. And the people of knowledge, they say, Al-Hasanatu tajurru ukhtaha. Al-Hasanatu tajurru ukhtaha. That a good deed, it brings its sister. And it brings another good deed. So whenever a person, he is sincere with Allah in this manner, and he takes the means to get the knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doorways of goodness for him and grant him the knowledge of that which he did not know and grant him the knowledge of that which he did not know. So therefore, from this narration we see, or this portion of the narration we see, that we must take the means, that we must strive, and that we must make effort. First, striving against our souls to be sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to seek the knowledge for his pleasure, knowing that he has made actions and statements obligatory upon us. And therefore, we want to learn them and know them so that we can fulfill that obligation. You have to know that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. Seeking knowledge because it's an obligation. Seeking knowledge because it's an obligation. And then after that, likewise, striving to apply that knowledge. You're striving to apply that knowledge, to know this knowledge. And for this reason, 
to fulfill the obligation of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon insight and upon clarity in a manner that He is pleased, the one who sets out in this way, He will have goodness with Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَيَزِيدُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْا هُدَى That verily Allah, He would increase those who follow the guidance, He will increase them in guidance. وَالَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْا زَادَهُمْ هُدَى وَأَتَاهُمْ تَقْوَاهُمْ And those who follow the guidance, then Allah will increase them in guidance and He will give them piety. He will give them piety in their hearts. Therefore we see the greatness of this narration, سَلَكَ اللَّهُ بِهِ طَرِيقًا مِنْ طُرُقِ الْجَنَّةِ The one who takes the means, he rectifies his intention and then he moves upon that path. And he takes the proper means to learn the knowledge from the proper sources. What will happen for him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide his heart and he will fill his heart with faith and iman and he will bless him to do the deeds that are pleasing and he will make learning easy for him and he will be upon clarity in his deen and he will be upon upon clarity in in his deen we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his grace and from his mercy so we see <clears throat> in this wording in Sunan Nabi Dawood he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man salaka tariqan yatrubu fihi ilman salaka allahu bihi tariqan min turuqi al-jann min turuqi al-jann that Allah will set him on a path from the paths of Jannah. From the paths of Jannah. We know that uh, the majority of the time, whenever the straight path is mentioned, or the path of paradise is mentioned, it's, men it's mentioned with ifrad, in a singular form. And we know that at Islam is one path. They're not paths, but rather the sirat, the mustaqim is one path. And that is the path of paradise. And there's only one path. And this is clarified in more than one place in the Quran. And likewise in the Sunnah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَأَنَّ هَذَا سِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلًا فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ And verily, this is my straight path, therefore follow. And do not follow the other paths, or else they will lead you astray from my path. So therefore, the majority of the time, whenever we see the issue of the straight path mentioned, it's mentioned in a singular form. But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's referring to, the, excuse me, here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He's referring to the path of Jannah. He says, من طرق الجنة From the paths, from the paths of paradise. From the paths of paradise. And in reality, this has a proper understanding. And in general, we see that Al Islam is the path to paradise. And the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, this is Islam. The reality of Al Islam is the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, in accordance to the understanding of the Sahaba. That this is the, the path to paradise. But that path it has many avenues of khayr. That path, it has many avenues of khayr. We have a salat, and we have a song, and zakat, and hajj. All of these are different legislations that are legislated from the paths of paradise, but they're all one. They are all one. They are all one, and they are all at Islam. And like this, <coughs> likewise, it has come in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentioned in Surah Al-Ma'idah. And he said, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ نُورٌ وَكِتَابٌ مُبِينٌ that verily a light has come to you in a clear book. A light meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the guidance of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa is a light. Verily a light has come to you in a clear book. يَهْدِي بِهِ اللَّهُ مَنْ اِتَّبَعَ رِضْوَانَهُ سُبُلَ السَّلَامِ That verily Allah, He will guide by way of that, that light in that book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide the one who follows it. And He following رِضْوَانَهُ Following His pleasure. سُبُلَ السَّلَامِ سُبُل السلام, the paths of السلام, the paths of peace and safety and security. And he will bring them out of the darknesses into the light by his permission and guide them to the straight path. And guide them to the straight path. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in this book that whoever follows the nur and the light that has come with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his sunnah, and likewise the book of Allah azza wa which is clear, Whoever follows it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide him. Uh, guide him. Yahdi bihi Allahu man itaba rudwanahu. Those who search and seek and follow the pleasure of Allah azza wa jal. That, uh, that requires for a person to set on a path. To seek the pleasure of Allah azza wa jal, one, he has to learn his legislation. And that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, this is al-Islam. Wa raditu lakum al-Islam adina. Wa raditu. And Allah, He said, I am pleased with Islam as your deen. And likewise, Allah, He mentioned about this deen that He's pleased with, that He has legislated subur as salam that they are subur, that they are paths of safety and security, paths uh, of ease that lead to His home in the hereafter. Subur as salam al-mu'addiyya ila dar as salam that these are paths 
uh, of safety and security that be to the home of peace and safety and security. But the people of Namaz, they mentioned the uh, intention or the intent by a subur here, similarly like in this narration, Turuq al-Jannah, Subur al-Salam, the paths of the home of safety and security, or the paths of safety and security. Even some of the people of Namaz mentioned Subur al-Salam, yani Subur Allah Azza wa Jal, salam hu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the paths of Allah Azza wa Jal, al-Islam is one. But there are many avenues, many legislations. So therefore they clarify that the meaning is shara'i, a deen. Adati shara'af Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ibadihi. From the obligations and the, and the affairs that are recommended in the life cycles. That there are many different legislations in the, in, in the sharia. And many different sacred rights of al-Islam from the Jumu'ah. Jumu'ah is from the sacred rights of al-Islam. Likewise the Hajj. And likewise the Eid. All of this is from, this, from the sacred lights of, of Islam, the night prayer and the day prayer, the, ob, the night prayer and the morning prayer, the obligatory prayer. All of these are from the, the sacred rights and the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of them are from the path of paradise. And all of them are from Islam and from the path of paradise. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who put that person on the path from the paths of paradise, don't misunderstand that there is more than one path to paradise. But there is only one path to paradise. And that is following the pleasure of Allah. But there are many avenues of khayr that Allah has legislated for His servants. That Allah has legislated for His servants. And that is clarified in His book. And likewise in the light of the guidance, the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, And all of this is understood from the noble companions of the Prophet wasallam. So the path of paradise, this is what is intended. And the reality of that, to summarize the situation and the reality of Subur as salam which are the paths that lead to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Imam Sa'di rahimahullah wa ta'ala he mentioned about this wa huwa al-ilm bil haqqi wa al-amal bihi ijmalan wa tafsira a beautiful summarization of the situation and that is to have knowledge of the truth and to apply that in general and in detail in general and in detail so therefore seeking out on this path to seek knowledge, or going on in this path, to seek knowledge, what is the reward for that? That a person, he will obtain knowledge of the haqq and he will be guided to, to apply that in general and in detail. And the reward for that is that he will have paradise. And the reward for that is that he will have paradise. So therefore, whoever strives in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to follow his pleasure and to follow his guidance, then he will be given success. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he promised the believers this in his book. And he says, وَالَّذِينَ جَهَدُوا فِينَا that verily whoever strives in our cause and he strives in our obedience then verily we will guide them to our paths meaning our avenues of khair and our ways and our legislation the path of al-islam and the way of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and verily Allah he is with those who do good and he is with them meaning he will aid them and support them and give them success and will protect them in this life and he will guide them uh, to the goodness in the hereafter so therefore, the one who follows the straight path in this life, based upon knowledge and insight, then he will be given success in the hereafter to follow the straight path and that leads to paradise. The one who crosses the sirat in this life, safety and security, uh, safely and securely, then likewise, and he based upon knowledge and insight, he stayed away from the shubuhat and the shahawat, then likewise in the hereafter, he will be safe from those hooks and he will be safe on the bridge. And he will be safe on the sirat, which goes over the, the back of the hellfire. Yadim billah. And he will make it to the paradise by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by his aid and, and, and by his support. So therefore, we see the benefit of this first portion of this narration. And this is directly in reference to what that man he had mentioned. That he came all the way from the city of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After this, Abu Darda. Radiallahu anhu, he mentioned the next portion of the narration and he says, That verily the angels they lower their wings out of pleasure, pleased, pleased with the student of knowledge. They lower their wings, pleased with the student of knowledge. The people of knowledge they mention about this, this great virtue, that the angels they humble themselves. And that the angels, they lower their wings in this manner out of honor for the person of knowledge, out of honor for the student of knowledge and respecting that which he is seeking. 
And this is a great, great, great virtue and reward that there are angels. And this is something for a believer to ponder over because a believer, he believes in angels. And this here is in reference to a great pillar from the pillars of Adiman. Adiman or Bil Malaika. Adiman Bil Malaika. From the most specific qualities of a believer. Huh? That they believe in the unseen. And from those things that a believer he believes in with certain faith. Uh, believing in the angels. Here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he is referring to certain angels. A believer he believes in angels in general, and that which has come in general. And he believes in the angels specifically, and that which has become that which has come in detail. And like this, we see that there are angels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has, they lower their wings from humbleness, from honor and respect. Uh, for the student of knowledge. Because that student of knowledge, he is carrying the inheritance of the prophets. He is carrying the prophethood with him in his chest. He is seeking that. Therefore, out of respect and honor for him, the angels, they lower, his, they, they lower their wings for him, honoring him, respecting him. And also, this is an indication of the love that the angels, they have for, for the students of knowledge. That this is something that is clear. That this is something that is known. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that those who are seeking knowledge, there are angels around them. There are angels around them. And they lower their wings from humility and humbleness and respect and honor for them. And this is because the student of knowledge, Barakallah Fikum, the one who learns sincerely for the sake of Allah, he brings good to the people. The people do not expect to be harmed from him. The people will never be expected to be harmed from the people of knowledge, those who are truly upright. Whether the upright students of knowledge and the carriers of prophethood and those who are sincere with Allah and that, they bring nothing but good to the people. And they are the furthest of the people to harm them. And they bring sincere advice to the people. So likewise, like this, the angels who are also known for giving sincere advice for mankind and supplicating for the believers specifically, Many narrations have come when the angels, they supplicate for the believer. And likewise, in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, they had a humbleness and love for this person. The student of knowledge was carrying the, the book and the sunnah in his heart and the upright, noble conduct manners and his actions and creed and belief. Then they lower their wings. Uh, they lower their wings in this manner. When they lower their wings in this manner. It has been narrated likewise from uh, the Haditha Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu. And this narration is muttafiqun alayhi. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned about these angels. These angels then, <clears throat> they respect and love the students of knowledge and the gatherings of knowledge. Uh, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, inna lillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala malaikatan sayyara. Malaikatan sayyara. In one word, sayyaheen. Sayyaheen fudula. That verily Allah azza wa jal, he has angels that go about through the lands. Fudulan, meaning they're, from, they're not from the rest of the angels. These are angels that are specific just for this deed. They have been entrusted to this issue here. Yet tabi'una majalis al dhikr That they follow the gatherings of, of remembrance. فَإِذَا وَجِلُوا مَجْلِسًا فِيهِ ذِكْرٌ قَعَدُوا مَعَهُمْ وَحَفَّ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا بِأَجْنِحَتِهِمْ حَتَّى يَمْلَأُوا مَا بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا الْحَدِيثِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that these angels here, they're, they're, they're extra angels, not entrusted to any of the deeds like the rest of the angels, but rather they're specific. We're going around and seeking out the gatherings of the remembrance of Allah and the gatherings of knowledge. And whenever they find the gathering of knowledge, they will sit down with them and they will, they will surround them with their wings until the space is full from them, uh, and from the ground into the heaven, to the nearest heaven. And they will, they will gather them in this manner. They will gather around them in this manner with their wings from the earth into the heavens, from the earth into the heavens. And this is established in the narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is something that a believer he believes in. Because this is something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he has mentioned, he has narrated. And from the, the, the pillars and from the conditions of that statement, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, tasdiquhu fi ma akhbar. Tasdiquhu fi ma akhbar. To believe in everything that he has mentioned. And he has told us about these angels. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we see here that the angels, they're the best of the creation, or they're from the best of, uh, of the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. The angels, they're from the best and the purest uh, uh, of, the, of the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. And they search, 
the gatherings of knowledge and they search for the gatherings of khayr and they search and listen to the good and beautiful statements the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal and uh, the likes like this but also contrary to that or opposite to that the shayateen the shayateen shirar al-khalq and they're from the evilest the evilest of the creation and they also go around but they do not look for the gatherings of knowledge they do not look for the gatherings of the beautiful and, and the noble speech but rather they go and they look for the gatherings of fuhsh and fujur and fusuq and they go around on the contrary to the angels looking for the gatherings of indecency and foulness and vulgarness and sin and transgression so we see that the angels uh, they love to be around the gatherings of goodness and they listen to the goodness and on the other hand the angels uh, on the other hand the uh, the devils and the shayateen, the wicked jinn and the likes, they will, they will go around to the gatherings uh, of filth and evil and misguidance and wickedness. Of filth and evil and <clears throat> misguidance and wickedness. So Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he has some very beneficial commentary on, on this narration. And from that, he said, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, fa, fa fi had al-hadith, حفو الملائكة له بأجنحتها إلى السماء وفي الأول وضعوها أجنحتها له نعم. So he says that in the first hadith there is the fact that the angels they or, or in this hadith that we just read in Sahih Bukhari wa Muslim that the angels they gather their wings around uh, the people of knowledge around the student of knowledge in this manner all the way into the heavens and in the first hadith وضعوها أجنحتها له and in the other hadith here that we're studying, in Sunan Abi Dawood, the angels, they lower their wings. So in one narration, it's mentioned from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the angels, they lower their wings for the student of knowledge. The other narration, it mentions that the angels, they gather around the students of knowledge and they gather around with their wings, surrounding them, surrounding the students of knowledge with their wings. Ibn Qayyim, he says about this, As for lowering their wings, this is out of humbleness and out of honor and respect. And the other angels who are surrounding them with their wings all the way to the heavens, then this is protection. And uh, this is a means of protection and guarding for them. So therefore, there are two benefits from these narrations gathered together. Ibn Qayyim, he says, he says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, so now these two narrations together, this consists uh, of the clarification that the angels, they honor the student of knowledge and they love him. And likewise, they surround him and they protect him. Ibn Qayyim at this time, he says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, فَلَوْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِطَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا هَذَا الْحَظِ الْجَزِيمِ لَكَفَى بِهِ شَرَفًا وَفَضْرًا that if the student of knowledge, he did not get anything except for this great reward right here, this would suffice him. And this would suffice for uh, nobility and honor. I mean, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has angels that he has created, that do not disobey him and they do whatever he commands, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they lower their wings, some of them out of humility for the student of knowledge and out of honor and respect and love for him and that which he is carrying and seeking. And other ones, they gather around him to protect him and to help him and aid him. This is a great virtue. This is a great virtue. This is not found in the gatherings of, uh, uh, of he said, she said. And this is not found in the gatherings of so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and this is not found in the gatherings of, of, of the affairs of the dunya, but rather this is found in the gatherings of knowledge. The gatherings of knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So therefore, <coughs> we see that in the alimah, لَيَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Likewise, uh, the narration uh, after this, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, وَإِنَّ الْعَالِمَةِ لَيَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَالْحِيْتَانُ وَفِي جَوْفِ الْمَانِ Second part of this here, which is another sentence. That, or another statement that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he clarified in, in this narration, here in the wording of Abu Dawood, Rahimahullah, wa inna al-'alima yastakfiru lahu man fi al-samawati wa fi al-ard. Wal hitanu fi jawf al-ma. That verily the scholar, the, the scholar, the strong person of knowledge, everything in the heavens and in the earth, seek forgiveness for him, even the fish in the middle of the sea. 
even the, the fish in the deep waters of the ocean. In the wording by Tirmidhi and also Ibn Majah, uh, it says, وَإِنَّا طَارِبَ الْعِلْمِ لَيَسْتَغْفِرُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ الْحَدِيثِ The verity of the student of knowledge. Here in this wording, it's mentioned the verity of the scholar. And the other two books of hadith, verity of the student of knowledge. And no doubt that whether he is a student of knowledge or a scholar, they both share in a portion of this. And each one will be according to their knowledge and their application. And no doubt the one who has reached the level of a scholar in knowledge and experience with knowledge and application of knowledge and sincerity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and striving against one's soul to be humble before Allah azza wa jal, no doubt that he has a greater portion. But even the student of knowledge, so long as he is sincere with Allah azza wa jal, he will have a portion of this. He will have a share of this reward and uh, that which is in the heavens and the earth and even the fish in the sea, they will seek forgiveness uh, for the people of knowledge. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned likewise <clears throat> about this narration. He says, فَإِنَّهُ لَمَّا كَانَ الْعَارِمُ سَبَبًا فِي حُصُولِ الْعِلْمِ أَلَذِي بِهِ نَجَاتُ النُّفُوسِ مِنْ أَنْوَاعِ الْحَلَكَاتِ وَكَانَ سَعْيُهُ مَقْصُورًا عَلَى هَذَا وَكَانَتْ نَجَاتُ الْعِبَادِ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ جُوزِيَ مِنْ جَنْسِ عَمَلِهِ وَجُعِلَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءَ وَاللَّهِ عَلَى زُوَجَ وَجَعَلَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ السَّاعِيًا فِي نَجَاتِهِ مَنْ أَسْبَابِ الْحَلَكَاتِ بِاسْتِكْفَارِهِ لَهُ بِاسْتِكْفَارِهِمْ لَهُ بِاسْتِكْفَارِهِمْ لَهُ So therefore Ibn Qayyim رحمه الله تعالى he mentioned a great benefit about this and why do the everything why do the fish in the sea and all of these things in the heavens and the earth they seek forgiveness for the person of knowledge this is because the person of knowledge, he is the reason for the spread of knowledge. He is the means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has made him a means for the knowledge to reach the people. And likewise, this knowledge is the means for the purity and the success of the souls and the savior of the souls. And without this knowledge, the people and their souls would be destroyed and they would be gaining and earning the anger of Allah azza wa jalla. And with the knowledge that the scholar he carries and he teaches and he brings with him in his statements and in his actions, then the people, they are guided by that. And likewise, the person of knowledge, his efforts are restricted to this, meaning he's not like the rest of the people. Some of the people, they go about and they get money and they go about and they enjoy themselves and their pleasures, but the people of knowledge, they have restricted themselves to seeking knowledge. And they have given up much of the affairs of this life and the likes, and they have sufficed themselves with that which will uh, suffice them. And they have been content with that which will suffice them in order for them to spend their time seeking knowledge. And because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used them as a means to guide the servants and to save them from destruction and from misguidance and from whims and the likes like this, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recompensed them likewise from the same type of their deed, from their action, whatever they did, this great action of ihsan and to the creation and to the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the heavens and the earth and everything inside of them to also hasten to, to aid him, to save him. And to be a means to save him from uh, destruction likewise and to seek forgiveness for him and to seek forgiveness for him so just in the same manner that he is a means to help and aid the people and to bring them from the darkness into the light by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the knowledge that he carries and that he bears and from his manners and his conduct and the knowledge that he spreads and that he teaches and that he has given his life to this to this effort to learn and to teach then likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al kareem tabaraka wa ta'ala will recompense him by causing the creation uh, to seek forgiveness for him. In the same way he did good for them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he causes uh, the creation, the heavens and the earth, and even the fish in the sea, to likewise uh, to do good for him, and to seek forgiveness for him. And uh, this likewise has been also narrated in another narration by Imam Tirmidhi from the hadith of Abi Umamata radiallahu عنه, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ وَأَهْلَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرَضِينَ حَتَّى النَّمْلَةِ فِي جُحْرِهَا وَحَتَّى الْحُودِ حَتَّى الْحُودِ uh, لَيُصَلُّونَ عَلَى مُعَلِّمِ النَّاسِ الْخَيْرَى Allahu Akbar The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said Verily Allah and His angels and the people the inhabitants of the heavens and the earths even the ant in its hole and the fish in the water, they all make salat on the one who teaches the people goodness. They all send salat. They all send salutations and salat on the one who teaches the people goodness. 
And we know that a salah from Allah Azza wa Jal, the Abdi, he is that Allah will mention him and praise him in the high ranks amongst the angels. And the salat of the creation uh, for the people, for the angels, for the people, or these uh, these objects for the people from the heavens and the earth and the lights like this. This is that they will seek forgiveness, that they will seek forgiveness for the one who teaches the people goodness. This is a clear clarification of the virtue of knowledge and the virtue of those who obtain the knowledge sincerely and they are a means to spread it. And they are a means to spread it. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, grant us beneficial knowledge and to aid us to be from those who spread that knowledge and are light for, for mankind. And uh, we close with that this evening. Wallahu alam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Jazallah khairan al-Shaykh Abu Abdurrahman Samir for what he has given today of a beneficial talk and the beneficial of the virtues of seeking knowledge. Uh, so far there haven't been any questions and therefore I will present my question to uh, our Sheikh, Sheikh, Ismail, Sheikh Samir. May Allah bless him. Uh, Sheikh Samir, Allah, in this day and era, um, the means of seeking knowledge became easy. And Jazakallah Khair, you have mentioned the means of, of, of seeking knowledge is to travel. Uh, can you shed some light today on the means that it made easy today, especially with the social media and today the explanation of the ulama and the scholars have been very uh, accessible to us so much so that Sheikh Ibn Uthameen rahimahullah said in Hilya Talib al-Ilm that today ilm, instead of the Salaf used to go to the ilm, today we, the ilm come to us. So would you be able to shed some light on this? Barakallahu fiqh. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam wa ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Ma ba'd. No doubt in, in these days, alhamdulillah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made uh, the means of learning easy and facilitated. And if we were to think about that statement that our noble brother, he mentioned uh, about that, that the knowledge now comes to you. The knowledge now, we used to go to the knowledge now, now the knowledge comes to you. So therefore, this also increases the proof against us and also should uh, emphasize the importance that we should show to learn and that we have no excuse that we have no excuse and that we have to uh, take the means and uh, the classes and the lessons and the books that are being taught daily we should be diligent uh, to benefit from these means many from the live classes first and foremost from the people of knowledge first and foremost from the scholars their live classes that uh, are available, that a person he can follow, he can purchase the book that is being taught, he can follow along as if he's sitting in the masjid, as, as if he's sitting at the foot of the scholar. No doubt, uh, it's not the same thing. No doubt, it's not, it's not the same thing, but it's, the, it's, it's, it's very close, and it's the next best thing. You need to follow along with the people of knowledge, benefiting from these devices. And uh, also, another thing, uh, and he first from the people of knowledge or after that from the students of knowledge likewise in, in our communities we benefit from them and we support them alhamdulillah and, and, and the likes and he, in, these, in these manners especially in these days whenever traveling although it's easy now it's not easy because of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, the, the issue of COVID-19 so although they have been facilitated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is showing us who is uh, our Rabb tabaraka wa ta'ala and who is al mudabbir and the command is, is in his hands. And many people, even if they have the money today and the will and they want to, to go travel, they will not be able to because of the situation that we live in. So therefore, it goes back to the issue of benefiting from these devices and benefiting from the life classes. But the way of the people of knowledge, Barakallah Fikum, in teaching, and it is, is tarbiyah. And with ulama, they're known that, that are upright, and they build the people from the small knowledge to the big knowledge. 
and they teach books. They teach books. They start from the first page and they teach it to the last page. When they're done with that book, they go to the next book in line, like this. And they teach their first page they, they, to the last to the last page. In this manner, if a student, if a Muslim, is patient and diligent, after some time he will have much benefit. The problem is that many times we get hasty. We follow the class one times, two times, three times, maybe even sometimes months, even subhanAllah years. But if we don't live on the path and die on the path, then it's not going to benefit us. We have to die as Muslims. Yani, Do not die except in a state of Islam. From the greatest means of that to be tied to the people of knowledge and to hear the remembrance of Allah often. Often. And the point is that we have to be consistent. That we have to be consistent in, in, in benefiting from uh, the knowledge and from the best ways to do that with these devices. There's another issue, likewise, that uh, not only from the from the live classes, but now we have recordings. Now we have recordings. The Salaf they used to say, like for example, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, they would ask him, they would say, How come after Isha you don't come hang out with us? He would say, he would say, What am I gonna do with you? And he, he said, I, and I actually saw my, my Nabi so some was happy with Tabi'een. I'm going to go sit with the Prophet and, and his com, and companions in the Tabi'een. It's known that Abdullah ibn Muwarik, he, he died in 181. He didn't mean none of them. But what he intended, Rahimahullah, he would sit with them and, and read their books. And he would read about them and read their narrations. Today we can say the same thing. We can sit and read the narrations of the Salaf. Or even we can sit, for example, like the brother mentioned, who say, I'm going to go be, I'm going to spend the evening with Shaykh mean. Shaykh Uthaymin is not alive right now, but we can listen to his voice and we can hear his classes and books that he has mentioned from the beginning to the end. From the beginning to the end. We can sit with him as if he's in our house and listen to those, to those classes and those and, and that, that are suitable for us like this in this manner. This is something that we should take advantage of. This is something that we should take advantage of. And he's benefiting from, the, uh, from his devices in, in a good way. But likewise, Barakallah Fikum, there's an important point. And this goes back to our class and the topic of our class, and that is al-fiqhu fiddin. Al-fiqhu fiddin. Because a person, barakallah fikum, if he uses these devices without fiqh fiddin, they will destroy him. And they will lead him to misguidance, and they will lead him to desires, and they will lead him to whims. And even some of the people have left the deen. They have left Islam, and they have become mulhideen, an atheist because of these devices. Because they use them without fiqh in the deen. You have, we have to have understanding in the deen. And we have to remember the intent from understanding in the deen is that understanding that's coupled with knowledge. Because some people, they use the devices with ignorance. They don't know. And they look here and they look there. And they want to search about Islam. And they just type in Islam. And they go to any website like this. And many of the websites, they are not reliable. And many of the callers, they are not reliable. And many of the people, they are not upright. Any of the Muslims. And so a person has to be very cautious where he learns from. So if he's ignorant, he will not be able to determine. Other people, they know. They know that there's filth and foul things on the internet, but they do not, they do not give it its right. And they follow it anyways. And they, and they fall into the sins uh, from the internet upon knowledge. All of this is from the aspect of jahad and ignorance and using these devices with ignorance. So my point is barakallah fikum that these devices they have to have be you have to use them with fiqh in the deen. That whoever Allah wants good for he gave him fiqh in the deen, understanding in the deen. And he meaning anything in his life he knows how to deal with that according to that which is pleasing to Allah. They are following the pleasure of Allah. And when we use these devices we have to follow the pleasure of Allah. Whenever we go outside of our homes we have to follow the pleasure of Allah. We have to agree with our household and family members, our mothers and fathers, and our and our the, that are Muslims and our wives and, and children and the likes like this. We want to follow the pleasure of Allah. And this is the goal. So that has to have fiqh in the deen. Some people they get happy, they got a new device, and that device is the means for them to earn the anger of Allah. Because they don't use it with fiqh in the deen. So from this aspect, likewise, it's very dangerous. But if somebody were to have fiqh in the deen and be sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and use these devices. Uh, for the benefit, for the live classes, and for the conferences, and for the recordings likewise, then verily this is a, a great benefit. This, and, and I share with you, uh, my, my noble brothers uh, and sisters, that myself, after coming home from al Medina, after spending a, a long time with the people of knowledge, alhamdulillah, uh, and after coming back here for good, with no return ticket, I found in my heart uh, an empty spot. 
for some, and, and I'm looking, you know, I'm, I'm missing the, the goodness that I, I used to have by sitting with the people of knowledge every day. There was such a great blessing that was gone. And I'm searching to, to, to find, uh, to fill that empty spot in my heart, and I found it in recordings. Alhamdulillah. And I start looking online, I find Sheikh Abdul Razak, Sheikh Abdul Mahsin, Sheikh Suleiman Rahayri, all of them are Sheikh that I used to study with, Alhamdulillah. They all have classes, hundreds of classes, books completed from the end. So I started just going here with this. I started with this book right here. Alhamdulillah, I have that book. And I'll start class one, class two, class three. And, and I found, I found Alhamdulillah, uh, really what I'm what I'm searching for. So uh, my point to mention is that yeah, I mean, this is uh, the way of a student of knowledge. If he's not able to go there, then he will benefit from these recordings, and he will benefit from the, uh, these live classes in the internet. This is something that one must take advantage of, but one must likewise have fiqh in the deen and fear Allah Azza wa Jal. And uh, we mentioned before, and I repeat again, fiqh in the deen first beginning with the knowledge of Allah and His Tawheed. So if you truly have fiqh in the deen and you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you know that He is as Sami al Basir, that He hears all things and He knows all things. And you will know that la taqfa alayhi khafiya, nothing is hidden from Him. So therefore, when you use the device, you have to remember that. You have to use it with this fiqh, with this understanding. You have to remember that you have angels that are writing, kiram and katibin, ya'lamuna ma taf'alun, and they know what you're doing. So therefore, you use the device with fiqh in the deen. And if you could, in, in the usul of the deen, you know that Allah can see you and He can hear you. You know that the angels are writing. You know that you're going to die and you're going to meet Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So use your device based upon that understanding. Barakallah fikum. Because uh, I used to remember hearing uh, Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, he would say, Hafidh Allah ta'ala, that there, there's good in the devices, but the sharr is, is more. The sharr is more. There's good in there and there's evil in there. And the evil is much, much more. But any the point is, whoever can check his soul and use the device for that which is good, there is a lot of benefit in, uh, in the phone, in the internet, in the, in the iPad, and the likes like that. So any we will take advantage of them as much as we can, but we have to do that with the proper understanding and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah knows best. Barakallah fiqh wa jazakallah khair, Sheikh Samir. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a lot of questions that have been posted, so I'm trying to swift slowly through it. Um, so there's a question over here by, uh, by someone who says, uh, What advice would you give to a revert and a newly practicing Muslim? What should they start off with? Okay, can you repeat it? Or What advice would you give to a revert? And a new uh -huh. practicing Muslim, uh, uh -huh. what should they start off with? Uh huh. Ahsan, Ahsan. Well, I guess a very important question, and uh, they will start off with the same thing that every Muslim will start off with, and that which is that which is obligatory. Whenever we learn, we have to we have to learn how to learn, and in learning, there are things uh, that take precedence. In Islam, everything is important. There, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he said, khafif." There's nothing in this deen that is light. And he, in reference to the verse uh, of Allah Azza wa Jalla, Inna sanurqi alayhi qawran thaqeera. Rarely we're going to cast upon you or reveal to you a heavy, a heavy statement. And he, there's nothing in the deen that is light. And covering yourself or pulling your pants up above the ankles, this is nothing light. So everything in the deen is important. Everything in the deen is important. Very important. But in these important issues, there are things that are more important. And there's things that are most important. So therefore, a believer, he begins with that which is most important. And that is the obligatory affairs. And that is understanding the proper creed and the proper belief and understanding the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, establishing that correctly and properly, understanding the shahada, what it means and what it requires and what it necessitates and how to comply to that. This is what comes first. And so somebody who is a new Muslim, or somebody who is an old Muslim and they didn't go upon this way, all of, all, all of us, we have to begin here, beginning with the obligatory affairs, beginning with the pillars of Al Iman and learning them properly, and the, and the pillars of Al Islam and learning them, learning them properly from the best uh, of the books for the new uh, students to read with regards to this is Adrus uh, al Ri'amat al Ummah by Sheikh Ibn Baz, the important lessons for every Muslim. And it's been explained by Sheikh Abdul Razak, Hafidhahullah Ta'ala, and it's been translated. This is something that is very, very beneficial 
for uh, a, 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 new, a new Muslim to start with, or even a, a, somebody who was born Muslim but never actually uh, learned the religion properly. So therefore, we begin with that which is obligatory. And then we move on after that with regards to creed first and foremost and after that with regards to salah and wudu and tahara and how to keep oneself pure and clean outwardly and inwardly now Jazakallah khair wa barakallah fiqh This is apparently a very famous question amongst the sisters Here is a question she says Assalamu alaikum shaykhana Is it recommended for a woman who is a wife? Is it recommended for a woman who is a wife and a mother? to take the path of Talibat al-ilm after learning what is obligatory upon her, meaning should she increase? Uh -huh. MashaAllah. These are all uh, important questions. No. Uh, and, and we, in these days, if we look at the Ummah and the condition of the Ummah, we see that the Ummah has been overcome by ignorance. To the fact that uh, many of the of the lands, there's so the ignorance is such widespread that there are graves that are worshipped besides Allah inside the masajid, inside the masajid, and there is much innovation and misguidance and and ignorance that is widespread, and therefore the people of knowledge they mentioned this emphasizes on us in these days the obligation of learning, and uh, no doubt as has proceeded and likewise which is in this question after learning that which is obligatory. Yani, that which is learning obligatory, uh, should one increase if one is able to increase them? That way they could be uh, a means of goodness for their community. We need people, men and women, who, are, who, who have sincere intentions, who strive against their souls to be obedient, to be a means, to be a light in their communities, and to help the people and to aid them. So we need people who have this concern. And we need people who are not only brothers who are going to teach in general, teach the men specifically, but we need women who are going to teach the sisters. There are sisters who need to learn their deen. There are sisters who need to learn their deen. And in order to do that, they have to have sisters who can teach them. The sisters who have learned the obligatory affairs and they have also learned some other issues in the religion so that they, they can become firmly grounded in knowledge. Because after learning the obligatory affairs, somebody who's going to seek knowledge, then he will, he will like, for example, learn the Arabic language. And not, not, just, uh, not just how to read, but how to fluent, become fluent in the Arabic language and know the Nahu and the Sarf and the Balagha and the likes like that and also learning some other uh, sciences from the sciences that are considered uh, instrumental knowledge. That way they will have the ability to deal with the texts and they'll have the ability to benefit from the statements of the scholars and to look in the books and to review and to research. So therefore a person, he will become grounded in this manner and we need people like this. People like this who want to aid and be a light for the Ummah. So if there are women who have this desire and they have this raghba, we should aid them and help them. But if it's going to cause her to fall deficient in her obligations in her home, then no doubt the obligation of her home takes precedence. If she's already fulfilled the obligation of learning the obligatory knowledge. Yani, so therefore, yani, with regards to this, should she continue, she would have to look at her situation. And she would see that if this is going to have a great effect on fulfilling the obligations of her children and her husband, her husband first, and then her children, then uh, this is something that would probably not be encouraged. But if she could gather between the two, or if the husband could likewise aid her and help her, and, and the lines, then this is good, and they could work together upon that, and, and the law knows best. This is a follow-up question that says, how does one aid one's family in seeking beneficial knowledge if they have fell away from Islam and that which is beneficial for them? Barakallahu uh -huh. uh, May Allah guide us and, and our families mm -hmm. and, uh, and all of the Muslims. Um, you have, we, we should deal with them. <clears throat> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that whoever uh, would hope for uh, whoever believes in Allah or, in the, or who would hope to be removed from the, the hellfire and, and entered into the paradise, then death should come to him while he believes in Allah in the last day and he should treat the people the way that he would like to be treated. So therefore this person, maybe he's misguided or maybe he's fallen off, but we should not belittle him or we should not uh, make a mockery of him or we should not speak ill to him, but rather we should uh, put ourselves in his shoes. If we, ha if we, if we were, uh, had fallen into his situation, how would we like the people to deal with us? 
And of course, we would like the people to be gentle with us. If a person has fallen into misguidance and has fallen into sin, then that means that he, he, his heart is weak and his deen is weak and these people are unstable. So we have to be careful with them. So we don't want to be a means to cause them to go further into misguidance. Some people, they, in reality, although they want good or even sometimes they intend good, if they don't have the proper knowledge, they are not a means to call the people to the sunnah, but rather they're a means to run the people away from the sunnah because of their bad manners and because of, uh, 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 of their, their bad weight and not actually having knowledge of how to call the people or how to advise the people or how to deal with the people who have errors and mistakes and the life like this. So therefore this person who has been away, you should try to call him in whatever, you can, whatever way you can in, in the nicest way, in a gentle way, by reminding them first. The people who have gone away, they need to be reminded. They, re they need to be reminded that they used to be in the womb of a woman, that they were created in a woman, that they, that they came out of that and that they were provided for, and that they're returning to the one who created them in that, in, the, in that womb, and that they're going to be held accountable for their deeds. And if he's a Muslim, he has these foundations, but he has to be reminded about them. So therefore you start with a reminder of the Tawheed and the greatness of Allah and the question of Allah and the standing before Allah and you try to cause them to fear Allah. And also you make dua for them. If we have family members who have been misguided, then we will make dua for them a lot and in abundance in the choosing the proper times of sujood in the end of the night in between the Adhan and the Aqama, uh, supplicating for them, asking Allah to forgive them, asking Allah to guide them. And there is much good in this likewise. So we try to call them in the best manner, in the best way, and little by little, to be a means to, to help them and to call them back with beautiful teaching and preaching and directing them to certain people, or sometimes maybe they won't take from you, but they'll take from somebody else, trying to get them to come to the masjid, trying to help them, whatever you can do to facilitate for them their path back to uh, obedience. Now, and Allah knows best. Barakallahu fikum Allah. This is a questioner who says, Jazakumullah khair, Shaykh, wa barakallahu fik. I ask Allah to give you best in this dunya and akhirah. What are some means that we may take to ensure we are among those who apply the knowledge Allah has blessed us with? Jazakumullah khairan. Uh huh. You need to strive uh, uh, against one soul. If a person he learns something, he will strive against the soul to use that knowledge and to apply that knowledge. Uh, and, and, uh, and that's it. You know, person he will apply the knowledge. So if if we know that uh, if we learn, for example, the, the Tawheed of Allah and His beautiful names and attributes, and that He sees all things and hears all things, and He knows all things and nothing is hidden from Him. And then whenever our soul calls us to disobey Him, this does not this this remembers that doesn't have any effect, and we continue to disobey Him anyway. And in this person he's not applying that knowledge. He has a weakness in his application of that knowledge, although. Possibly the foundation of Iman is there and it could be correct in general and he doesn't have a misguided belief But the Iman can become weak and the Tawheed can become weak and the Shahada can become weak So therefore if we learn something then we have to apply it Whatever we know we have to do our best to to apply it and then we see forgiveness likewise for our, our shortcomings So therefore it, it goes back to this taking a person and taking himself into account he will look and he, and he will never try to do something that he knows blatantly is not correct or not right. And he, and he, so he's striving against the soul to apply the knowledge. In this manner, he could be from those who apply the knowledge. Now, Ahsan alaikum, Sheikh Samir. This is another question who says, is it appropriate for one to shut themselves out at times in order to seek beneficial knowledge the attaching from the dunya in order to benefit and act upon that knowledge if the family environment may not be the best for them to for them or a distraction mm -hmm. no no doubt seeking knowledge is the bad and uh, the best way to to worship allah is to be alone and he, somebody who any except for that places where it's not you know like the congregational prayer but if a person he wants to worship allah like in Ramadan, the people of knowledge, they, they, they advise him to go to, to be alone, like in Itikaf. Itikaf, the Prophet, he'll be by himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to worship. Likewise, seeking knowledge is similar like that. A person, he will go by himself a lot uh, in order to focus and to learn and to memorize. But one should not entirely cut himself off. So he wouldn't cut himself off entirely, but he will have times. He will have times when he's alone. He will have times when he'll be by himself. Maybe there are some times that he's alone more than others, that he'll be by himself. 
but in, in order to learn, in, in order to worship. But he will select the times that are best and most suitable for his learning and for his worship. But he will not cut himself off entirely, especially not from his family. Because cutting the ties of relationship is from the major sins. And, he, and, 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 and uh, this is something that uh, must be avoided. But a person, he will manage his time and, he, and seeking knowledge. And he will give everyone their rights. The family, the wife, and the children, they have rights upon us. And, and, and vice versa. And the life's like this. The parents, they have rights upon us. Keeping the ties with our relatives, they have rights upon us. And also, we have to um, earn, earn a living. This is a right life. Loss, so we have to find time for all of this. And, and make the balance and be adjusted. So therefore, any for the questioner, may Allah bless them. And that uh, you won't cut yourself off entirely. Never will you cut yourself off entirely. But you will definitely have times whenever you'll be alone where you can focus and you can review. But with regards to seeking knowledge, I just advise that although one will spend a lot of time by himself, he will always have partners that he studies with, and companions that he trusts and, and relies upon and that he sees good in them and he will review with them. And this is from the best ways of seeking knowledge and the best ways of learning that you will study by yourself uh, the, the same information with the companion. And then after that, uh, he does the same thing and then you meet with him and then you review together. In this manner, the knowledge becomes firm, be it So you spend some time by yourself and sometimes with your family, sometimes at your job and sometimes uh, alone worshiping and sometimes memorizing and other times reviewing with your companions. Like this, you have to uh, make a, a balance, make a balance now and Allah knows best. Barakallahu fikum wa hafizakallahu Sheikh Samir. Inshallah, we will end with this question, and it's more of a personal question that was posted by some of the listeners. Which scholar have you benefited from the most? Which scholar have you benefited from the most in your studies? And what was the best advice you took from them regarding the seeking of knowledge? Uh -huh. uh, I benefited from many of the, of the people of knowledge, alhamdulillah, uh, in Medina. Uh, and in uh, in Samita and in Riyadh, Alhamdulillah. But uh, from the, the the best of them, and uh, what I benefited a lot from Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, Hafizahullah uh, Taala, and in my days in Medina, and many other than than them also, I benefited from them. But Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, what I seen from him, Hafizahullah uh, Taala, from diligence to benefit the people. And uh, he would never miss a class. Six days a week he would teach. He would come. Even sometimes he, he would tell, he, and he, he, he'd become old. Uh, but he would continue to come. Six days a week, six days a week, and he would never stop. And he would continue to benefit. And to benefit the people, even to the extent that there are certain benefits that every time the opportunity came, he would repeat them. And, and he, would, he would repeat them over and over. And uh, to see how he dealt with the people. And to see how he was uh, humble with uh, the students and see how he's generous likewise. Many times he would he give us money, not just me, but rather thousands of people, books. Every time he started a book, he gave us all free books. And every year he would pass out hundreds uh, of reals for every student who was in need. I benefit from that. And he, and he financially, alhamdulillah, but I know from the kindness that he had and from the love that he had for the students and uh, the benefit that he brought to them, alhamdulillah. So he's from the, those who I benefited the most from, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, amongst others, Alhamdulillah. Likewise, Sheikh Suleiman, and he from the other aspects, and he, that's from that, that aspect, from the aspect of fiqh, because in hadith, we, we, we don't focus on fiqh or, or surah fiqh and the likes uh, to the details that they might do in the in Sharia. But Alhamdulillah, uh, sitting with Sheikh Suleiman, I benefited also from that and how to teach, because he, his methodology and teaching is very clear and easy. An explanation. So, Alhamdulillah, I actually benefited from more than one of them. Each one of them, a certain effect they had on my life. Uh, Alhamdulillah, may Allah reward them, the, the best of reward. I just mentioned those two, I need to summarize. Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu feekum, Shaykh Samir, wa hafizakum Allah. May Allah reward you for what you achieved today. Uh, inshallah, we're going to resume tomorrow, business since that was the last question. Any, there were many questions, uh, but we didn't want to prolong this. So any questions that were not answered today, inshallah, will be asked again tomorrow to our Shaykh Hafizahullah. And with that, we'll end this session. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Samir, and Jazakallah khair to all the listeners. Please tune in tomorrow at the same time, bismillah. Tomorrow will be the last session. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.